sir. I'm here. Yeah, good. Let's... All right, scroll up a bit so I can see. Uh, number four, Mbele to Naindelea. Everything can be taken from a man, but the one thing to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. Wrote concentration camp survivor, Victor E. Frankel, in months search for meaning. Kenya today boasts of an educated citizenry. Let's use education. This portable investment, as the Jew, Jews view it, to redefine our lives by doing what is right. Despite the current socioeconomic struggles in our country, 2023 affords us and as individuals yet another opportunity to choose our own way and what we wish to do with our lives. To choose, to take control of our circumstances and to accept responsibility for those choices may not always yield success and happiness, but failing to do so guarantees defeat and misery into the future. God bless Kenya, Professor Laban P. Ayiro, Vice Chancellor, Desta University. Yeah. Yes. Like, I um, yes. Um, I, I just thought we need to reflect. Um, at at uh, chapel devotion or, or one of the senates, um, and uh, I I would like us to have a very brief discussion, maybe uh, ten minutes, ten maximum fifteen minutes. Uh, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. So begins a tale of two cities, Charles Dickens' novel said during the French Revolution. You remember the queen uh, when told the people are rioting, wanting bread, she said, why don't you give them cakes? Uh, so, and I just reflected on the difficulties we we had just come from the COVIDs and the, the election. And uh, by the way, this war in DRC is is a real worry. And then the skyrocketing inflation. Uh, some of us were to anticipate socio-political earthquakes. As uh, many of you are education is the dilemma for junior secondary children. Uh, I hope as educationists you carry that burden. Uh, the statistics looked very, very, very gloom for all of us. Um, uh, I think uh, it is against that background that I said uh, it doesn't matter uh, how much the optimism of the new year embraces us. We had issues. And I hope you know that a lot of the conditions we are going in are actually, we are going through, and the year is coming to an end, are actually conditionalities set by the Britain Woods institutions, IMF and World Bank. And uh, you'll agree with me that those austerity measures then have driven the bulk of uh, Kenyans into abject poverty. But... Uh, Uh, as a nation, we are exposed to too much negative rhetoric uh, instead of positive vibes that would enhance national cohesion and support the president in his focus on economic recovery. 
And need I say, as a citizen of this country, I sometimes I need a helmet from to protect myself against the political, ethnic, and cultural brickbats that um so I I then said if we are in such a situation, and I think we are more or less still in the same situation, what do we do? And the first one is we have to treasure what we have. And I'm very I'm very excited in a very special way that uh, um, you have chosen to to immerse yourselves into studies. I know that uh, people like Boaz have just walked out of one program into another one. Um, that could be very deliberate so that you want to hang your spirits around something engaging. So instead of watching uh, destructive messages coming on the news TV, you are busy worrying about the quiz that is just coming in in the next 10 minutes. Uh, that's more productive. Um, so some of you, you want to unearth your talents. Um, if you are, wherever you are, you want to, to immerse yourself in what you're doing. And you just want to be the best version of yourself under these circumstances. Uh, so my, my plea is that uh, we have to treasure what we have. And it and, uh, doesn't matter what you have, but treasure what you have. And for now, I would like you to treasure Ask God to help you embed yourself in this program and also pray for the instructors and the university so that we can meet part of the bargain so that by the time we are getting to next year, you are almost seeing your hard and master's degree coming. So I would like. Um, somebody to to read uh for us if you are able to read for us or Ruth Ngosi just this paragraph to count our blessing and then you will try <clears throat> to interpret it yeah Okay, so to count our blessings and truly thank God to pause and remember what we possess rather than what we lack means beginning the new year with a sense of gratitude. Remember gratitude is a form of humility and this honors God. That is in Psalms 25, 9. What's more, the inventory of our talents and treasures puts a curb on our apprehension, apprehension sorry, regarding the future. Gratitude looks to the past and love to the present, wrote C.S. Lewis, the screw tape, letters, fear, avarice, lust, and ambition, look ahead. Yeah. So, in fact, that is, the, that is my devotion, gratitude. Gratitude, shukran. Can I, can I have... Uh, any any critique, critique doesn't mean oppose. You can strengthen my thoughts here. These were just my thoughts. Um, we have to treasure what we have. And sheath ourselves in these 
very difficult times. Nalondo. Right. Thank you, sir. Um, just to strengthen what you, you've given us this evening, and uh, I'm so much touched with the first point that uh, we have to treasure what we have. In so many occasions, and even in our Christian devotions and uh, seminars, we tend to hear people talk of the challenges they're having, the problems they're having in life, and they forget that God has given us even the opportunity to see another day, even the opportunity to have our families, to have our friends. They forget that this is a complete treasure that uh, we need to thank God for. I have always reminded people in my surrounding that if you happen to go to Kenyatta University, uh, I mean, uh, Kenyatta National Hospital, and you go to the ICU wing, then you will be able to learn why appreciating just the source of life that you are having, the fact that you are working, the fact that you can be able to do, you can be able to move from one place to the other, is important and therefore appreciating what we have appreciating even our children even our family and everything around us is important rather than focusing on the negatives in life and we forget that there are more more important things that we need to thank god for and therefore i agree with you prof that we need to thank god for even in colossians chapter 4 verses 2 mm. the bible says give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So we need to thank God for even for the source of life. Thank you, Prophet. Otiano, okay. Juliet, and then Taslim. Uh, very quickly, two minutes comment. So thank you so much, Prof. I um, I agree and I love that statement of uh, we need to treasure what you have. And I've learned one thing from that first paragraph. It means that we are all wealthy, but our wealth can be can come out in can be seen in different ways. We can be wealthy in terms of material goods. We can also be wealthy based on these other treasures we have that might not really be material goods. Things like a, a loving husband or wife, wonderful children, friends, uh, that spiritual faith, even wealth. Sorry, even health itself is uh, wealth. Because uh, another person is struggling with it. They have money to get it, but they have money that they can purchase everything, but that is the only thing they can never purchase. And so, whatever we have, we might not be having the material goods, but you can be blessed in these other areas. That is one thing enough to thank God for. And that one now reminds me that we tend to focus so much on what we don't have, and we view what other friends have not looking at the little that God has given me. Because this person that has material goods, they might not be having that loving husband or wife. And that is what they desire. This loving, this this wonderful, uh, uh, what, rich man, or this, like, let me use your example. You are, uh, I believe you're one of the people that have achieved much in this life, even in terms of material goods. But you could be having children that are not loyal. Maybe they are lost in drugs, abuse, and... Uh, they're just so difficult to handle and they're just a pain in you. The money you have, you are investing in them, being rehabilitated and so on. So mm -hmm. each one of each one of us, we just need to sit down and just look at what is this one thing that God has given me that I am happy about and let yeah. me be grateful to that. And even as we are being reminded up there when you are guiding, when we are still reading the slide, like uh, the, the, the prices of things may be difficult, but I can still choose what what I want to what I want to spend my money on and many other things. Yeah. So basically that is what I have picked from there. Just to be grateful of what we have. Because because what I have is a prayer to another person. It may be little, but it is a prayer to another person. Thank you. It is true. Tasleen. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, what I've learned from whatever we've been reading today is that we just be grateful for whatever we are going through whatever we have because there are maybe even people that are worse off for example i remember this year has not been very good for my family we've had a very sick person 
but we were even now thinking that maybe we even wronged God somewhere. That's why this child was going through whatever he was going through. But at the end of the day, after living in hospital maybe for maybe five or four months, he got out and he's now doing well. And so we just thank God for everything. Uh, we could now even start blaming the government for the high cost of living and everything that's happening. But let's just do whatever we have or um, uh, just do whatever we, we can. Like whatever is in our control, let's do it. If the nyanyas are too expensive, let's look for an alternative or something that we can afford if we can even maybe walk sometimes for a distance and then maybe panda matatu and get to where we are, we are going, then that would be better instead of just blaming and not even being grateful for what we have because at the end of the day, gratitude is everything that we need. Thank you. Very good. Akini, uh, one last comment, then we move on to part two. We're taking a little longer. But... Yeah, good. Yeah, so... So I'll back up your sentiments by reading Philippians 4, 11 to 12. Yeah. It says, I have learned to be content in whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned this, the secret of being content in any and every situation. So um, we, we, we are just taught to appreciate the present and also to foster a sense of contentment and in, and fulfillment in our lives. Uh, at some point, in, in in one way or another, we have lost love, loved ones, and we or rather we've lost very precious things in our lives, maybe a job, maybe a loved one, or maybe money, things that make our lives complete. So at that particular moment, we also learn that, uh, you know, when you are when you are in luck, that those in luck and in need, and, and when you have it all, those are two different perspectives. So when you lack, it will teach you that when you are uh, having it all, then you really mm. need to appreciate it because we are not on this earth forever. We are just mm. but uh, a passing it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, because of time, uh, Paul, Atema, I want you to read part two again and then... Uh, Vision. Then we'll go to part three and wind up. Yeah. Uh, Paul, are you there? Yes. Yes, I, yes. I'm around. Uh, yeah. Part two. Let's focus on the necessities. We live in a world of distractions and are bombarded with news, noise a reckless matter to culture and imprisoning advertisement. Daily, we also find ourselves swamped with activities, many of them tri trivial in a larger scheme of things. Moreover, some of us have buried ourselves in physical clutter, self glorification and called for shenanigans against others and uncontrollable appetites for wealth, hindrances to the meaningful life not to mention the cantankerous political sludge that fills out at news time on our TV screens. By taking inventory, by taking inventory this year, this new year, we can identify what we truly most, we truly most important, what is truly most important to us, and focus our energies on those things. On those things, if we realize our example that the love of our spouse is key, is a key ingredient in our happiness, we'll want to put more into that relationship as depicted in the Bible. If physical strength and weight control top the list, we'll join a gym and clean healthy and eat healthy foods. Focusing on what matters give us a guiding star for 2023, but three. Yeah, so um, Machio, could you just make sense of that passage and then we'll close there. All right, I was reminded of um, the Garden of Eden and um, yes. uh, our dear first humans um, were made in God's likeness and they forgot on what was key 
they forgot to focus that they are made in God's likeness. They, they lack nothing. And so they allowed a snake, and maybe one of us, all of us would have done the same, to draw them away from what was key, the basic necessity. What was important is that I am made in God's likeness, and therefore I lack nothing. And so based on our focus on what is not necessary, we lose uh, we lose the part that is key, and then we easily then fall into to sin. We easily fall into complaining because then we forget what is key, and so all the other things became clutter. You know, all the other clutter that 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 Adam and Eve focused on at that particular time made them forget who they are, and who they are is that they're meant in God's likeness. And every time we forget Thanksgiving we miss out on the point. And the point is what uh, David says in uh, Psalms 103, that forget not, bless the Lord of my soul, forget not his benefits. And his benefits for me, those are the necessities that are critical. And um, that's, that's how I can sum it up, uh, Prof. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. Uh, I just give a chance to one or two people who across the, the reading, if you have anything to show, uh, Stephen, you have something to to add on to elucidate. Anybody else? Uh, good. I just want you to. I want to encourage all of us that uh, uh, this year, twenty twenty three has been a difficult year, but uh, just remember we have to treasure what we have. And let's focus on the necessities. Uh, necessities. Uh, and I don't know, I don't want to get into your houses, but uh, my own house, there's so much clutter in the wardrobe. There are clothes I've never used and yet I have relatives who have torn shirts. There are shoes I've never worn. There are sweaters I've never put on, and yet I have people, or there are people in my congregation who are suffering with this cold. And one time a preacher was listening to a someone from Tanzania told, told all of us, that uh, you complain, uh, you complain and uh, you don't give out anything to the needy, you don't give out anything to your relatives, you think they are laggards, but you don't know that it's God who has put you in that privileged position to give to others, to give. I have never forgotten that sermon about three years ago. And now every Christmas I go home and I, I literally empty the wardrobes and tie up jackets, shirts, what, and label them and give them out. Uh, because I know some of them, I never used them. And he said, can we ask God to have you exchange your roles? You become that other person. So that you can also know the pain of uh, waiting to be given. Exercise responsibility. Uh, I've seen many Kenyans do that. Um, they have exercised a lot of responsibility. So instead of cursing and uh, as the politicians spew out raw sewage in terms of what they are saying, why don't you just stop watching news? Yeah, and then you remain clean in the heart, in the mind. And uh, let us choose to control our circumstances and ex accept responsibility for our choices, uh, even when they may not yield success or happiness. Let's, let's accept those choices. So that, that was my message for you <clears throat> in today's uh, devotion. I, I really want to, uh, just one, one, one part, we'll do the rest next week. 
But I also want to emphasize, we talked about gratitude and humility. And uh, I, I, I would like just to emphasize this. And um, perhaps I'll be asking uh, the best, the best, uh, I don't know if this is the one. No. I'll be asking the best reader in the class. If you know you're the best reader, uh, you will cut up your hand. And say, because I would like it to come out very well. Um, and um, so I'm not seeing hands coming up of the best readers. Mm. Oh, I'm seeing many good readers. Huh? <laughs> I don't know why this is this is why is this thing letting me down? Yeah, it is here now. Okay. The best reader. Let me see who sound came out first. The best reader. Uh Akisoma Ivizuri San Tampa Airtime. So it was Grace Guitare. Let's 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 compare Grace Guitare and Gaki. Those two. Let me see how how good they are. They read this. The best readers. I I love this. Uh, so we'll do just that one because of time. The rest we shall do next week. So there's still chance for you to show your prowess. Uh, go on. Allah. Prof, who did you say? I had Grace Guitare. Uh -huh. Is it Silvanus Guitare you meant or what? Yes, it was Guitare. Okay. The key. Okay. Yes. Yes, the Inter key is here. Okay. So we start with Guitare. Intellectual Dispatches by Prof. Laban Peter Hiro. Motivational Thoughts. The Power of Humanity. In genuine humanity, the, the power enormous, of humility. humility. The power of humility. Yeah. Thank you. Go See, ahead. There is enormous power. Free yourself from the demand of your ego, and there is no limit to where you can go. Let's go. Let go of your desire to control others, and you vastly improve the ability to control. Focus and direct your own actions. Let go of the illusion that you are already. You open yourself to higher levels of enlightenment. Move beyond the need to blame in a greater degree of responsibility. Get past, get past the impulse to and you are able to focus more, to focus more clearly on the matter of real and lastly value. Give up the thought that you are better than everyone else and a whole new world of opportunity opens up to you. Stop seeking unfair advantage and you are free to develop an unstoppable effectiveness. Quit demanding the most and start expecting the best. You will experience a level of true abundance, true abundance, um, something destructive. You level of true abundance that you never before and you would have imagined. Live each moment with humility, love, respect, and gratitude for the whole of life that surrounds you, and you will find a treasure that. Okay, thank you. So, can you can you grade that reader, the class, uh, confidentially, and uh, you submit your mark to Karo? Uh, Gaki, let's listen to you. Okay, I'm set, Pro. They can, they can you can send it on the inbox. You, so my separate is like, don't send to everyone. Just oh, send, to just send your name and the mark. You are marking this out of ten. 
Do mm -hmm. I start from always give the best? Prof, do I start from always give the best because that's the farthest that I can see. If you can scroll, no. please. No, no, no. Oh, the same, same part. Okay, yes, thank you. Are you competing. Yes. Motivational thoughts, the power of humility. In genuine humility, there is enormous power. Free yourself from the demands of your ego, and there is no limit to where you can go. Let go of your desire to control others, and you vastly improve the ability to control, focus, and direct your own actions. Let go of the illusion that you already know it all, and you open yourself to higher levels of enlightenment. Move beyond the need to blame, and you gain a greater degree of responsibility. Get past the impasse to place judgments on others, and you are able to focus more clearly on matters of real and lasting value. Give up the thought that you are better than everyone else, and a whole new world of opportunity opens up to you. Stop seeking unfair advantage, and, and you're free to develop an, an unstoppable effectiveness. Quit demanding the most and start expe expecting the best. You will experience a level of true abundance that you have never before could have imagined. Live each moment with humility, love, respect, and gratitude for the world of your life that surrounds you, and you will find a treasure that has no end. Thank you very much. Can we, can we grade the two and send your marks in? There's a prize, there's, a, there's a, an award. But on, on a serious note, um, my master's class in leadership and policy studies, that's why I want you to look for money and buy this book on insights into leadership. Uh, there is no greater weapon on this earth than what we read in First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 to 6. The power of humility. And, and uh, every line there is, is, is loaded. I don't know what to read and what not to read. But uh, give up the thought that you are better than everyone else and a whole new world of opportunity opens up to you. Stop seeking unfair advantage to develop an unstoppable effectiveness. Quit demanding the most and start expecting the best. You will experience a level of true abundance that you never before could have imagined. So live each moment with humility, love, respect, and gratitude for the whole of life that surrounds you and you'll find a treasure that has no end. I can't say that better. This is what I have lived myself literally. Uh, it is just a treasure, the power of humility and gratitude. So, uh, Caro, you tell us, uh, you'll post who, who had the highest mark. Don't give us the marks, but just say number one was so and so, number two was so and so. And uh, during the devotions going ahead, we are going to look at always give the best, embrace the responsibilities, uh, who you are inside. Uh, as aspects that come from that book, which I would like to really have each one of you have a copy because they are actually nuggets for life that you'll find very useful. Carol, over to you. Tell us, what next? Well, they are sending to my WhatsApp instead of, of this one. But uh, uh, from the WhatsApp uh, that they have sent... Uh, no, just uh, total everything. What I want you to tell us, is the exam ready? <laughs> uh, the ex oh, oh, of course. Uh, the, yes, we, we want to begin at... Uh, 1845. Okay. 
Okay, so, that so that's good. That, that's good. Then it will give me some time. Uh, as you do that, um, the class, can you give me your attention? Um, uh, Faith Nzuki, you have something to say? Not really that far. You wanted to read, but then that one has gone. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so what do I want to do? Today there is a quiz. A quiz is a multiple choice. They are just multiple choice questions. You can close your eyes and tick them. Uh, but just remember that you are accumulating your marks. I am very busy looking at the work you submitted. Uh, so you'll be getting it uh, in the course of uh, next week, latest. Uh, summarize uh, something around the problem statements very quickly, and then uh, we will give you more examples of problem statements and then after the exam, I want to start the literature review uh, I so that I'm living within my timing as we move on. Malimu, you have something to say? I saw your hand no. up. Yeah, no, no, my question is answered. I wanted to ask what happens after the quiz, but you have said something. After the quiz, we have literature review. But uh, I, I would like... Uh, to share something. Are you seeing this? Yes. You are seeing this yes. screen? Yeah. Yes, we can see it. Yeah. I, I, I want to speed reading. This is this is work I have covered, but I want us to we, we are now wrapping up the problem statement or statement of the problem, because that is where we shall meet our point of crushing defeat. This will be our Waterloo. And that's why I want to make sure that uh, we have given this the treatment it deserves. So um, we had um, after that devotion, we had um, uh, Boaz, are you online? Boaz Waruku. Yes, I'm online, uh, though I'm okay. having a power cut, so I'm, I'm working on the hotspot. Just oh, so you can't read, eh? I'm, I'm having a power cut. Okay, Just okay. Um, okay. Helen Gachanga, are you, are, you, are you able to read for us? We are doing speed reading. Uh, prof, yes. hi. Prof. hi. Hi, I can read. Evening. Okay, so just tell us who you are and go. Let's go. Okay. Uh, understanding the seven types of research gaps. That's what you're going to look for when you are doing your proposal. So let's go to... Sorry, Sorry Prof, I, I also wanted to make a statement before you move on. If you don't mind. Go ahead, go ahead. You have been selecting on Boaz for all the times to read, so we would like, or I would like to suggest uh, that moving forward, you suspend selecting boas and also <laughs> give us a chance, please. <laughs> is that my <laughs> Yeah, this is my is my Prof Madiang is my younger brother, so let him just complain. <laughs> That's how he complains all the time. <laughs> I think uh, it is about, my daughter is called uh, Ruth. So maybe that's why I think of boys, you know, so, you know but uh, not intended. But uh, taken on a light note, let's go on. Prof, I can read. 
Go ahead. Tell us your name. Uh, my name is Helen. Uh, sorry, I'm not able to show my video this evening, um, but I can read. Yeah. Okay. Understanding the seven types of research gaps, objectives, be able to recognize common research gaps, gap types, identify research gaps, write about research gaps. Introduction. One of the most prevailing issues in the craft of research is developing a research agenda and building the research on the development of the research gap. Most research of any endeavor is chiefly attributed to the development of the research gap. This is a primary basis for the investigation of any problem, phenomenon, or scientific question. Given this accepted tenor, tenet of engagement in research, it is surprising in the research fraternity that we do not train researchers on how to systematically identify research gaps as a basis for their investigation. This continues to be a common problem with the novice researchers. Uh, little theory and research has been developed on identifying research gaps as a basis for a line of inquiry. When working with doctoral stu students, this concept of addressing a gap in, the, in prior research seems to be foreign to them. The idea of finding gaps in the uh, finding gaps in the research has been troubling for most researchers, mostly particularly doctoral students. For a considerable period of time, there were no more no formal or um, established frameworks for identifying or characterizing research gaps. It appears that identifying research gaps is in the eye of the beholder. One researcher's gap may be another researcher's non-gap. Most of this conflict with research gaps tends to touch on perception. Many researchers may argue that a gap is one thing or it is not. It is still a, a struggle for most researchers, especially doctoral students, to identify and define gaps in their studies. This chapter will introduce the seven types of research gap. See figure 5.1. Okay. I want you to pause. Everybody look at this figure. By the way, this is doctoral stroke master, master student, master student. So, uh, and our intention in this course is that uh, by the time we finish with you, uh, the PhD will be a walk in the park. Yeah. So, these are the seven research gaps. First, there is a population gap. So you can do a study on the Dorobos of Kenya because very little has been studied on them. You can do a study on why mathematics is the most poorly done subject in the country because very few studies, uh, uh, action research studies have come up to tell us how do we improve the teaching of maths? You know that maths has always carried the highest number of A's and the highest number of E's. Hi, uh, tuberculosis. Why tuberculosis? still is prevalent in a country like ours 50 years after independence. So it can be a gap in population. You can also do a study on empirical gap. That is, very few studies have been done in that primary area. I am really hoping that I can get many of you interested in doing your gap being around the methodology, a methodological gap. So most studies were quantitative, you want to do qualitative, or most studies were either quantitative or qualitative, you want to be pragmatic and do a mixed methods of study. So that's, that's another gap. And then there is the knowledge gap, if you're doing basic research. You want to add to the knowledge. There is the theoretical gap where somebody used a different theory. You think the theory should be this one. 
and then deficiency in the evidence. Deficiency in the evidence. And then practical knowledge gap, that means action research application has not been done. So I want you to note that your problem would be trying to address one of these seven gaps. One of those seven gaps I shown. And uh, this framework, uh, we attributed to Robinson and Jacobs and even Muller Block as uh, the people who have worked here at great length. Um, I would like to ask Madian, the theoretical foundation and development of the research gap. Uh, can I, before, before we go there, can I make sure, all of you, make sure uh, that you know that your study will involve one of these gaps. It's very important for you how, to have the, the theoretical framework. So, and where there's a gap, that's where we find the problem. And that's where we want to find a solution. Madiang, carry on. Thank you very much. Very fast, yes. This theoretical model was developed from two important articles by two researchers who did an outstanding job of building a taxonomy of research gaps. The first known article that developed a framework for defining research gaps was by Robinson et al, 2011. In their model, they identified and described five types of research gaps. A, population, B, intervention, C, comparison, D, outcomes, and E, settings. Mueller Block and Kranz, 2014, developed a research gap model that itself was developed from most Robinson et al's 2011 framework. This theoretical framework was developed after exhaustive research on the conducting of literature reviews and was based on Jacobs' 2011 theory of research on research problems. Jacobs' 2011 identified six kinds of research problems. These problems parallel research gaps as discussed by, by Muller Block and Kranz 2014. While research problems are not necessarily research gaps, they might be synonymous with research gaps. Their framework consists of six types of research gaps. A, contradictory evidence, B, knowledge void, C, action knowledge conflict, D, methodological, E, evaluation void, and F, theory application void. Mueller, Block, and Kranz, 2014. We found the frameworks proposed by Mueller, Block, and Kranz 2014 and Robinson et al. 2011 to be significant theoretical developments on research gaps. Building on the foundation of these two theories, we developed a theoretical framework that is an amalgamation of the two theories and did two things. First, the new framework is a mixture of the two frameworks, but only uses one construct from Robinson et al.'s 2011 model. Second, we reconceptualized the model developed from Mueller Block and uh, Kranz 2014 by simplifying the names of the constructs in their proposed framework. Miles 2017 proposed a new model built on the two previous models that consists of seven core research gaps, renamed and ranked from the most common to the least common. A, population, B, empirical, C, methodological, D, knowledge, E, theoretical, F, evidence, and G, practical knowledge. C, yes. figure 5.1. This is now the consolidated, the rationalized model, uh, which br brought together the thinkings of Bloch and Kranz and Robinson et al. 
And uh, all I want you to note is that whichever research you will do, it will involve, it will entail one of these gaps. It's very important for you to have that mindset even before, uh, after I finish literature, you must, I'll be asking you, uh, which is your gap? Uh, I mean, from the model, which is your gap? And these are the ones here. So let us just look at the seven research gaps from most common to least common. We want to see which ones are used most in research, uh, Meshak Sindani. If you are there, take it up. Uh, Prof, when we start the class at uh, yes. When do we start the when quiz at seven? Seven. seven? What? Uh, oh my God! I can't hear you. She is asking when we can start the quiz. Oh, don't don't be too anxious. I might I might even defer the quiz because this is very important. Huh? <laughs> anyway, um, let us just look at one. Then I'll give you this document, and you can read it, put it in your database. So, uh, Sindani, are you there? Yes, I am. Go on. The seven research gap from most common to least common. Another prevailing issue with research gaps is being aware of the most common to the least common. Many doctoral students are not aware that some gaps are more common than others. To help the readers of this book, we have strategically ranked the most common research gaps to the least common, see figure 5.1. Population gap. This gap concerns a focus on a population that is under-researched or not adequately represented in prior research, e.g. gender, race or ethnicity, age, etc. A population gap is the most common gap recognized by researchers. Characteristics. Very common gap. A population gap is the most common gap recognized by researchers. Underserved population. There are always underserved populations that have been under-researched. This gap addresses a population that is under-researched or not adequately represented in the evidence base of prior research, Miles 2021 and Robbins et al. 2011. Three, empirical gap. This gap is concerned with such findings in prior research that lack empirical research or a subject matter that needs to be evaluated or empirically verified. An empirical gap deals with gaps in prior research. This conflict deals with research findings or, or, or propositions that need to be evaluated or empirically verified. Characteristics or em, 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 empirical gap. This gap is concerned with research findings in prior research that lack empirical research or a subject matter that needs to be evaluated or empirically verified. An empirical gap uh, deals with gaps in prior research. This conflict deals with the research findings or propositions that need to be evaluated or empirically verified. Characteristic number one, common gap. An empirical gap is the, most, is the second most common gap recognized by researchers. Uh, conflict with prior findings. This gap deals with the research findings or propositions that need to be evaluated or empirically verified. Yeah, you're 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 fading, but uh, lack of empirical line of inquiry, the empirical gap often addresses conflicts that no study to date has directly attempted to evaluate a subject or a topic using an empirical approach. I want us to pause there. Uh, you'll get this document, and uh, some of us will do our study will rotate around gender, race, ethnicity, age, population gap, others. So many studies have done this and this and this, but very few studies have covered this empirical gap. 
Others will do methodological gap. This research was mainly qualitative, but in order to get true observations, we shall do a quantitative study or we shall adapt a mixed method study. And, and so it will be very important for you to go through those gaps because they relate to the problem statement. And I've, I've even given you examples of problem statements that will help you consolidate your knowledge around the various gaps as we move forward. Carol, I'm pausing there. Take over. All right, so. So, so let me switch off one of my gadgets. So, uh, Wanafunzi, we are now ready for our quiz. Uh, we can give you some five minutes uh, so that you can take up your keys. Um, so that it begins at seven, exactly seven. It's a small quiz, it's not a lot. Uh, you, it's just what you've covered and therefore not recalling if you understand what you've been able to cover. It's a multiple choice. Always remember to make sure that you read carefully before you answer. One hour because you reduce the number of questions and uh, therefore you will just be able to access it exactly when the time is available. Now, some of the instructions you need to know is that uh, once you've, you need to complete the question completely before you move to the next one because it won't allow you to go back to the question. It also won't allow you. So revise your question carefully before you choose your response. And uh, the best thing is that uh, the responses have already been given by Prof. So you'll be getting your scores instantly as long as you've been able to finish your quiz on time. You'll find instantly your, your grade and this contributes to that. I've noted that we have about five people so missing in class. I think Othello, anybody else seeing a sick child? If you know your colleagues, in, especially in the groups that work, uh, if you know them and they're missing in class today, remind them that they have a quiz to be able to undertake. All of us need to undertake that quiz. Uh, Meshak, it is really nice and uh, that. Uh, Prof, I don't know whether you also wanted to know the scores of those who read properly uh, in terms of... Yeah, uh, yeah. but before oh, that, Carol, Carol... I don't think he was part of the team that was just, just Carol. while they are vouching for him, but I think we have... We can have you hear me? Team. Carol, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear, Prof. Yeah, I, I first of all, the class, every mark matters. When I teach research methods... I normally expect a normal distribution curve. So I'll expect very few marks below 50 in my class. I expect very few A's, but I expect the majority to be between 50 and uh, 80. So every mark matters. And this is this is the American style. In America, when we are teaching research methods, we don't give essays. Describe, compare, contrast, define, no. We give multiple choice questions. So get prepared for this. We have covered the purpose of research and we have covered the problem. The next quiz will be on literature review. So please note that. Don't worry how much each of these assignments will carry. I'll aggregate these assignments. I'll get the average. Then I'll do the weighting for the class. So you shouldn't worry. What is it, but every mark counts. Uh, Kara, we are starting at exactly seven, isn't it? Yeah. Someone is asking where to get the cut. Logging into the online, you're going to see the portal. In your portal, it's going to show you where the cut is. You won't see it until exactly 7. So you are you can be free to log out after this, after we finish. Please, then you can... uh, please remember the gaps is where you will sit when you are writing your proposal. So that, that document I'm going to send you, I'll not have time to go through the rest. You read it, it's, it's very readable. Uh, and understand those seven areas which presents gaps for you for your research. 
And then after this, I'm going to tie up the problem statement, then move on to literature review between eight and nine o'clock. Okay. All right, so please log in into your uh, online. You'll find the card there, and then you'll be able to undertake. You have some few minutes to log in. We want to wish you the best, and uh, thank you for joining us today for this particular uh, class. Um, where, where exactly is it, please? You're going to leave us here, but we don't even know where to where like how to locate it. Which week? Where exactly? If you'll see just the quiz, it will show you on week week five. You'll see it. Okay, thank you. Five. Okay, thank.